I was never a politician. I was uh, I was never interested in politics. Mm. I used to criticize the politicians yeah. that time. Yeah, because in a way you're defending not just the cabinet's position, but you're also in charge of sort of uh, maintaining the government's position and profile. That time I believed of uh, parliamentary period. That time, one issue that I still regret that I shouldn't. See, it's not easy to regulate this space. Mm. Uh, not just for governments, not even for platforms. Mm. Is it easy, like Twitter and all right. those people? Even they can't regulate this space. Right. It's very difficult. Right. You know, you are talking about evolution, not Correct. least, and all that. Correct. But first, you evolve your power within the within system. institutions within itself. Institution. I always have a theory. I say everybody has the right to dispute, argue, disagree, mm. but no one has the right to insult one another. Thank you for joining us, Minister. Uh, my first question is, you are co-cabinet spokesman at the moment. You are also Minister of uh, Media and Information. But this is not the first time you've been cabinet spokesman. Neither is it the first time you've been Minister of Media and uh, true, Information. True, true. So my question would be, with your experience and stuff, like this is, in my view, this is an important job because in a way you're defending not just the cabinet's position, but you're also in charge of sort of uh, maintaining the government's position and profile outside. So in your view, what are the three top skills that you need to do a high-level communication job like yours? Well, you cannot restrict to three, okay. <laughs> many, but uh, as priorities, I would say first is the people's friendly. Yes. Right? You need to Correct. be, you need to, be, you should be able to communicate, mm -hmm. not to get offended for, yes. because say, you're meeting the media. And their questions can be classified as funny and arrogant and you know, so you, you need to adjust yourself to meet that uh, sort of uh, whatever, because your idea is not to get arrogant Correct. for arrogant question, but Correct. to give an answer mm. so that he'll feel cool. <laughs> yeah. So then, so so those are very essential qualities, yeah. I think, to hold this position Correct. and to be effective in the position, okay. right? Because uh, you cannot lose temper in the first place. Yes. I know media, I know you are very famous, and <laughs> all of you are, you know, trying to annoy the person, <laughs> okay. right? So if you get annoyed, if you then you lose balance, Correct. then you some completely go out of. Right. So, so you need to keep your cool in the first place. Yes. Uh, you need to also be very informative, yes. right? You need to know your, your, I mean, subject well. You need to uh, be thorough with your current affairs mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps, you know, the government policy mm -hmm. should be on your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Those are little things that you can also make it and then one word dancers will always uh, make <laughs> things uh, easy. <laughs> right. right so. Uh, so I'm going to move to your past a little bit. Um, so I realized, I learned just yesterday that you had very early in your career you produced a movie uh, which is something not many people know, especially people in my generation. Mm. Uh, it's known as, it was Sakwiti Suwaya and you were the youngest producer at the time? Yes, even up to now. Even up to yeah. now, right. And in the movie, Gamini Fonseca acted and it was also Mahindra Pereira's breakout role. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, how did you end up uh, first in producing <laughs> movies and then... Well, uh, you know, I'm a hotelier by profession, Correct. so yeah. I was a chef for a while. Okay. Then uh, gave up. I got into the hotel industry anyway in a different capacity. Yeah. I was a board director of Ed Okay. Well, you know, I was a businessman and then I never wanted to restrict myself to a single area. Yes. I was doing gem and jewelry. Right. I was placed in a few other things. Uh, I very few things that I have not done in yes. terms of <laughs> business. So, as far as that is concerned, that time it was very lucrative and mm. that is uh, early, late 70s. Mm. The industry was uh, flying high. In mm. fact, uh, it was doing very well. Okay. So, I thought that's another area uh, that you can get into and also, you know, at that age, at 2020, when you are young, you are yes. dynamic and then you are creative. more with the creative and so, so on. And so, so many factors combined together. Yeah. And, uh, was there, yeah, that's it. Um, talking about your entry into politics, um, this is during Gamini Disanayaka's time it, yeah. with the DUNF. That's it. Um, what was the political background at that time? Because I know it was very tense. Well, you see, during that time, there was anti Premadasa move, mm, yes. very strong anti Premadasa move. And uh, while sort of giving uh, credit to whatever the things that he did, mm. there were certain grey areas as yes. well. Those grey areas were discussed. Uh, quite critically mm. and uh, it happens to be that it's their own people in the own party mm. like the key stalwarts yes, right yes. like Gamini, Lalit, yeah. uh, Premachandra, they were like key personalities in that government 
decided that uh, that you cannot move on with this person, mm. this personality, mm. like Premadasa. And uh, and there were certain issues, as you know, I mean, 88, 89, mm, yes. uh, and then uh, came 90s. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, uh, and they made uh, their mind to deviate from that and also leave the... To, to, to move forward with the principles of the United National Party, mm -hmm. the basic policies of the, you know, free market, market economy and market forces and yeah. kind of thing, and then uh, privatization and private sector engine and kind of thing. So, so same thing, but uh, moved on to more uh, according to them, they felt that there's more inner democracy yeah, in yeah. the system. So, I was never a politician. Mm. I was never, I was never interested in politics. Mm. I used to criticize the politicians at <laughs> that time. Yeah. But Gavani was uh, used to visit my neighbor's house. Okay. And then he, in fact, people in the district has uh, sort of uh, recommended saying that to get so and so. Okay. I was young that time. Mm. I used to help uh, people around, you right. know. So you know, either it is Vesak or so no, some dancers or they are sports activities yeah. so I was in the youth so yeah. they, they, they so through that I think I mm. um, got interested and he came and met me mm. seven times oh, right. okay. so I said I'm not interested in politics party politics mm. or rather mm. parliamentary politics Correct. but I will uh, certainly help you finally I agreed to help him but mm. then eventually he put me into the provincial list and I yeah. happened to win. Yeah, <laughs> I got it very easy. <laughs> right? Yeah. And there are it, uh, some there, you also get it, there's no mm. looking back now. So, Correct. You, know, yeah. um, you spoke of sports. Now, I, uh, uh, you also played sports when you were in school. Yes. You were also colorsman and all of that. Yes. Do you think in a way this political, I don't want to call it game, but the whole challenge of politics, in a sense your sports career or whatever in school helped you? You see, I always advocate uh, sportsmanship. I yeah. always say, even children, when they come to see me, I say, what are the sports you do? Mm -hmm. At least get one. Yeah. And that makes a man perfect. You mm -hmm. know, you become all around, you know, not just academic. Correct. Right? You, you learn to accept judgments, mm -hmm. you learn to accept the rule of law, you, mm -hmm. are, you play the game, and you also accept to, uh, you must be prepared to accept the defeat, uh, not to react to it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, react to it in a sort of in a, in a very sporty manner. Yes. Not, you know, yeah. right? So those are little qualities that will build a perfect personality. And I, I strongly believe because I got five colours in yes. college and yeah. a captain to college in tennis, table tennis and squash. Mm -hmm. Got national colours in wow, tennis. So, 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 <laughs> yeah. so I'm happy about it. Yeah. I'm not only happy but uh, that has sort of refined me mm. in my political career mm. and then there's a lot of addition to the political career to sort of make it uh, firm and you know. Push you past yeah. any challenges yeah, and, and then stuff. And also, we part, uh, I captain the team. Right, college, so not uh, just sports. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I'm the, I think I'm the only person who captain the English and the single dependent team both. Right. Right, so <laughs> college and St. Thomas was good. Yes, so, impressive. So we uh, had that basic uh, mm. requirements to move forward from there onwards to the next, next level. Mm. So I think that uh, even in Parliament today, Mm. I'm happy to say that when I am on my feet, generally people don't disturb me because mm -hmm. I don't disturb others unless there is a substantial yes. issue that we should take it and that I don't take it as a joke. In fact, Correct. I don't, uh, and my language I use fairly reasonably good language yes. unless I'm provoked to such an extent, <laughs> but very seldom it happens. Once it happened, and I regret whole of my life. In fact, mm. I openly said that I regret uh, entire my period of uh, parliamentary period during that time, one issue that I still regret that I shouldn't have done, that I had yeah. um, When you made your entry into politics as a young politician, how old were you, if you don't mind? I was something like 30. Okay, so quite young. Yeah. Um, what did you find were the biggest changes from like a sporting or school arena or a more um, business-like arena? When you move into politics, what are the biggest challenges? You see, the, there are a few, but uh, today in one two is that uh, you know, the systems were not in place, you know, just uh, too ad hoc. Uh, so, uh, still it's the same. I think I'm in mean, 30 years of my right. political system, but I still am able to put everything right. But uh, people's expectations are on the basis of that you need to leave, have systems in place. Mm -hmm. And you don't leave it. That's why, you know, some of the developed uh, countries where, uh, say for instance, uh, 
uh, officer can take uh, decisions mm -hmm. because those decisions are laid down. They're not variable. Right. Even if they are variables, the variables are there are certain percentages of variables where he takes the decision. Right here, you will have to ask that next man, then the next yeah. man goes to the other, they yeah. go to the other, then finally end up with the minister. Yeah, ultimately right. everything comes so to you. Yeah. So it's useless, you know, I mean, yeah. you have a huge staff down okay. the line, but when it comes to certain things, that is also that, uh, what you call, uh, you call it uh, dual power. Mm. Uh, you know, we are talking about evolution, northeast and all that, but first you devolve your power within the system. The right system. Institution, because you, sometimes the, I'm not blaming anybody, but sometimes uh, people tend to believe and build empires mm. to say all is binding, yes. you know, nobody yes. can. I think that is a wrong system because you should be able to now uh, be the chef. I used to tell them uh, if everything is perfect, when the chef is there, it's normal. Mm -hmm. When he's not there, if it's not normal, then it's, uh, there's That's a problem. The problem. Yeah. Right? You should make sure that your subordinates, your, your mm. colleagues, you know, down the line, mm. carry on it, mm. you know. So that's where you see you were looking for consistency. Correct. Say somebody friends will say it was fantastic. This mm. the next day you go and it's not, not so. The same, yeah. They're not so yeah. that is the consistency. The consistency, uh, the consistency comes uh, from a line of command. You know, in the absence of you, how do you know in the absence of you see even the birds when they fly over the Correct. seas, they point a leader. You know, from Australia when they fly to Sri Lanka, yeah. there's a leader. And the leader, something happens to the leader, there's somebody to replace it. And that's why they're so organized that they know the targets. So do you see that your position right now, even in the government, because I would say that you are uh, perhaps the second generation or yeah, third layer of uh, politicians since we received independence. So you, and if we haven't come even to that place yet, even, and the recognition is still there, the future generations will be as important still to take this and maintain it, which means you have a huge job. To stay. It doesn't end with you, like there's a lot more to no, do. No, yeah, it's a baton, you know, yeah, you, it's, it's a relay, you know, you, you take the lead sometimes, even if you don't take the lead, you give it to an ex-man who's supposed to be better, Correct. you know, then he take, if there's, a, if there's a lead to cover, then he should be able to cover it, and, you know, so it's a, it's a continuous process, yes. yeah, and there's no end to it. What is your view on the younger politicians right now? Well, right now I find there's a good uh, set of people, okay. but I still believe that this system has to change, this PR system, you know, PR system is not a system for Sri Lanka. It has to be the first past the post and a mixed one, you know, maybe, you know, 70, 30, so that you will have some uh, sort of, you need to also have a, like upper house or senate, senate you know, yeah. where you can get experts of various fields, not to just fill, you know, your friends and relations mm. and kind of thing, but uh, there's a, there should be a space where you can bring in some experts into the system. Mm. Right, so I say if it's a finance, you know, finance expert, you know, economist, a top class economist, you know, in the upper house. So he'll, he'll also with compliment each other, you know, in their friend. So uh, then that's the kind of thing that will, that should be brought into the system. Have mm -hmm. you ever had the opportunity to say, I mean, to speak your views on this? I have always. Okay. I've stood by always uh, my views. And then some uh, material, some do material, uh, some mm. don't, mm. some they look it as a. You know, something yeah. discarded on the side. <laughs> so just, uh, you know, it doesn't matter, but yeah. I expressing your views is a, is a freedom that yeah. I enjoy and yeah. I would like that to be remain as it is. Correct. Anybody should be able to express their views. Correct. I always have a theory, I say everybody has the right to dispute, argue, disagree, mm -hmm. but no one has the right to insult one another. And you can disagree, you know, we can disagree very, very harmlessly, you know, I mean, you know, okay, fine, you can dispute, you can argue, but at the end of the day, you know, nobody has the right to insult another. Right? So, so that is, that a, is a policy I always appreciate and I said that's a policy that will make you forward, take you ahead of others, you know. Okay. So I'm going to switch a little bit to some current things and I wanted to talk about the Press Council um, Act that mm. you wanted to amend. Yeah. Um, with that, um, the okay. So the news reports were that you wanted to, or you or the ministry wanted to look at uh, some laws in Singapore. No, not no, at all. That is not Singapore okay. is something that I would not touch. Yeah, because when I looked at those laws, yeah. the government there meddled with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Singapore that, is a different yeah. thing. Singapore is good as small as cities, yeah. two million people, yeah. and uh, they are 
very much discipline yeah. and the discipline has been brought out by Lee Kuan Yew's stuff yes. uh, ruling. So that mentality, that uh, they mentally conditioned them. Yeah. And the people are so involved, they are not interested in, you know, <laughs> being yeah, out out and, yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah. So, so uh, that's the system that is good for uh, that society. Yeah. Right? Perhaps it's good, some may have said that's the worst. Right in our society, I'm looking at Indonesia, okay. there's a new one. I'm okay. looking at uh, Philippines, there's a new one. Okay. Of course, everybody feels that there must be a change in this whole Correct. system. Yeah. And India is drafting. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm studying all mm. of them. Yeah, because, see, it's not easy to regulate this space. Mm. Uh, not just for governments, not even for platforms. Mm. Is it easy, like Twitter and all right. those people? Even they can't regulate this space. Right. It's very difficult. Right. So I was curious to know how you would set about doing it because you have no, to. No, so you see what happens. I have a responsibility. I have a dual responsibility. Mm. One is the media, freedom mm. of speech, freedom of uh, all that is there. Yeah. On the other hand, I have a responsibility of 21 million people Correct. of the country. Correct. You have maybe thousand journalists or 10,000 or 100,000 journalists. Rest of the two million, 20 million. I uh, if uh, their rights are uh, so hampered or you know tempered or mm. whatever you call it, then there must be a redress for them as well. Yes. Right. Here, it can't be one way. Right, so it has to be, I was uh, advocating uh, the fact that this must be done with uh, consciousness, mm. right? But it seems to be, uh, it's not happening that way, but some, uh, well, I have had some experience in when I was the uh, spokesman for national security, okay, yes. right? Uh, many people uh, agreed with me on the floor. And I used to point out some people and then they used to say, okay, well, you know, that man shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have written that, you know. And there was, you know, so I was happy mm. whether if he, even if he had written that. At least uh, they were able uh, to. Acknowledge the fact yes. that it shouldn't have been there. Yeah. So that is a good start. Right, that's how at the media, you know, not like this, you know, I mean, with all foreign journalists, uh, defense attache, attaches, you know, you know, firing all questions. Uh, mm. Children's uh, brigade, then people, unarmed people being shot, a lot of issues, right? So, uh, but still we manage quite well the, the media uh, center. In fact, that was named by me. The yeah. whole thing was built up so by I me. I was a pin. cub journalist at that time, uh, right. so I do remember right. the right. media and center. That was my idea and then uh, it's just... Uh, no, nothing. It was just a paper. So yeah. This thing like this, then we structured the whole thing. Right. But it went on very well. I was yeah. in Geneva with about two, three hundred journalists all over the world. You know. right. And it was uh, not difficult for me. Yeah. I mean, people thought that, uh, you know, uh, but, but because when you have your stance very firm yes. and uh, you know what you're talking, then you can always make it. You right. know, it's not difficult. Answering your question of this um, uh, press council thing, mm. I think some some people uh, uh, has got agitated, mm. you know, unnecessarily because uh, there were so so many sort of thoughts that came out at the consultative committee also in the parliament. Right. Right. Some were adamant that you must bring uh, criminal defamation. Mm. Right. This is. We so that's a, it, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's another mm. thought, you know. Mm. I mean, uh, the, if you're talking of freedom of speech, you know, that's, he should have the freedom to say, now, Nimal Sri Paras, have been called in all the time, saying that have defamation, you know, so nothing wrong with defamation. If you are not doing anything wrong, then why should you worry about it? At the same time, on the other hand, say the people have the right to go to the civil court. Mm -hmm. And a civil court, many people can't afford. And the judgment takes on five years, six years. Mm -hmm. And the civil lawyers are very expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not blaming the lawyers, but that's their mm -hmm. fees. Mm -hmm. So, how do you strike a balance in between this? Correct, right? because not only do you have to, like you said, you have to look at freedom of expression versus not allowing the media to publish things that are downright false okay. and fake. Okay. And at the same time, you're looking at even if you bring in certain stringent laws, how are people going to be able to balance that Absolutely. sort of thing? And then so also that some of the, say, so I've seen, this is my experience, some, some times you, you, you embarrass the family. The children mm. are refusing to go to school. Right. right, that kind of case. Yes. And then when you bring that out, mm. you have a front page, uh, some article, and they say on an eighth page, uh, say two by two, mm. you say we apologize. You know, you, you need to give the fair amount of publicity yeah. to the same effect. If you accept that this is not right, yeah. then you should have the courage. Yeah. And you should have that, uh, you know, should have the courage and guts to get up and say, okay, I was wrong. Correct. I have told someone times at the media briefings, 
when some people have said no, you know, I said, you are, yeah, I start, went through it and you are right, I am wrong. You know, I mean, you should be able to stand up and say that. Correct, like that uh, film, the newspaper that came out recently, ah, yeah, yeah, same plot, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, okay, um, what about the code of media eth ethics, even that is from 81, do you think that <laughs> needs to be updated? You see, I mean, they are all elders. Mm. So, they should be able to get together and work that out. Yeah. I can only give some guidelines, yes. right? And they are not working on it. Mm. Very unfortunate, yeah. right? And, uh, and they are talking about, you know, kind of dictatorship and, you know. So, I think it's still up to them. Now, I am in fact advocating this press club, yes. right? I want to set up yes. in key places like Candy, Martha, Kalambu. Yes. So that they can also get together. You know, that's uh, the press club itself, the club, you see that togetherness, you know, kind of, you know, your point of view or other issue cannot vary drastically, you know, mm. if you look at uh, an issue, yeah. right? Uh, it, it's a kind of word in and it's a kind of how you put it across. So there must be certain ethics, like say, something happened, I took a drastic decision where a priest set fire in near in front of Malika. All right? About five, six years. Oh no, ten years ago. I was then again the minister, yeah. So it's about between I can't exactly remember, between ten and fifteen. Right. Now, one of the journalists of one of the channels knew that. And he had told don't tell anybody else. Because he wants to get the first shot. The first story, yeah. And the the priest died, you know, on the spot. Right, that's that amounts to murder Correct. and connivance. Correct. It's it's a it's a inanibility and mm. connivance, mm. right? I cancel the channel, mm. but then again the prime minister president said get them or give them a warning and yeah, oh, maybe yeah. yeah, but in in US also yeah, there's a that eagle taking a baby, mm -hmm. you know yeah, he yeah. was interested in taking the shot. Yeah, shot. I remember this, yeah, yes, that very shot. famous photograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. where people killed it. Sure, because media ethics itself is such a very deep subject. Yeah. It's not easy to say in black and no, white. No, no, you can't. Yeah. That's what I say, it is a consciousness mm. and then it is also a condition in minds of people. You yes, know, the yes. journalist must have that kind of, at least that amount of decency. Mm -hmm. in so, what, so I, that how far they could go, yeah. you know, of course, yes something valuable, something yes, but that if that's going to cost a life. Mm -hmm. That's where they need to think. Right. right. Um, so just a quick question on the current, um, we're going into the United Nations Human Rights yeah. Commission uh, 46th session. Yeah. Um, the president has appointed a new committee yeah. uh, and it seems like the mandate of the committee is just to assess the situation with the or previous. The past. Yeah. Yes, um, so, why is it important at this point to. You do see, this? what happens is 2015 with the change of government, very unfortunately, I'm in fact, uh, Mangala Samaravira as the foreign minister then, I think brought in this 30 slash 1, where they say, if you look at that, say we have to consider it with appreciation of all Tarushman, you know, and they were, they were biased and they were able to prove that they were biased. In spite of it, I think uh, Mangala Samarvira had a different agenda. And to my knowledge, even the cabinet was not aware of that uh, resolution, joint resolution that was brought in by the US, right? US resolution. And that is in, the, in that resolution where they say that we have committed crimes and punished us. No way in the world that, uh, you know, you bring a, then uh, what happened then the same co-sponsor of USA after two years, uh, that's he, uh, Nikki Healy, who was the, the representative of the UN, resigned and took over, withdrew the uh, sponsorship, uh, co-sponsorship and said this is a painted, tainted cesspool of activities. That is the terminology that uh, she used so hard. And that's an ideal time for us to get out if we had any concerns about the country. Yeah. Of course, you know, you need to look at, you know, if the reparation if necessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I feel that, you know, I always said that even this um, commemoration of Veera uh, Dina, right, heroes there as far as the LTT is concerned. I said collectively the government sponsorship cannot be there because they are termed as terrorists. Yeah. But at the same time, for a, for a parent, a child is a child. Right, he should, or he should have, or they should have the right to have all their rituals, you know, within that, uh, listen, not publicly you can't do that because the champions of uh, democracy, like the USA, I ask that question, uh, would you like to erect a statue of Bin Laden? 
right? <laughs> because there are so many people who say Bin Laden is a hero and kind of thing. Muslims, they won't. Right? So, so democracy also have its limits. It should have its limits. Uh, democracy, uh, you know, there is a story, you know, I mean, like, um, you know, there's no democracy, like, um, open and ended democracy. Yeah. So, so, hence, uh, I would say that uh, we've been unfairly treated yes. in the UN, uh, human rights. Uh, it has been biased. And uh, it's been advocated by some party who's interested. Mm. You know, that is very visible. Mm. You can see that mm. happening. So, uh, then what happens? The other party gets stronger because your facts are not right most of the time. Like then they say 60,000 people were killed. And then the UN carried that. Mm. And the Nesby, uh, Lord Nesby, yes. comes out and says that he got uh, authentic uh, information from the Home Ministry. Mm that it is less than 7,000. Yeah. I think during the time of the war, the final uh, stage of the war, Count, yeah. uh, the representative was Anton Gash uh, of the British Embassy, the, what do you call it, um, the defense attache. And his reports were daily sent. Mm -hmm. And those reports never carried all that. Right. 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 So, no, those reports were the ones that uh, Lord Nesby have taken. Right. Right. And, and that says less than 7,000. Yeah. And this was a terrorist organization mm, killed yeah. them, you know. So, so you need to accept, you know, the cause of that can be discussed separately. Yes. But the action mm. where the, the action that they took up to is something that you cannot accept yes. in a democratic world. Yeah. You know, the, their cause, you might have certain reasons, but that reasons does not justify that kind uh, of, that kind of fact. Yeah. Yes. And what is like? What are you all going to? What's what are you going to say when when you? You go? see, if you look at 2018, if I remember right, then the foreign minister Tilak Marapana, when the lady, the chairperson there, read out all the charges and kind of activities, he refused to accept it. Hmm. He had the courage to get up and say that uh, that the, some of the clauses that they agreed, their party agreed hmm. at the outset, are not. They are not feasible and they cannot be implemented yes. within the Sri Lankan constitution. Correct. He I had the courage understand. to say that. So obviously, so which is, which is not permissible uh, by, the, by our own constitution and a member of the cabinet goes and advocate that which is not uh, practical and it cannot be a ground reality. Right? So there is a lot of discrepancies between the motion itself mm -hmm and uh, co-sponsoring and uh, the reaction of the uh, chairperson there, yeah. right? So you have about a month, you all have about a month to, a little more than a month to yeah, prepare. Yeah, correct. Well, I think this is, uh, I, I, I know certain things, you know, I'm sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? I'm sure this uh, will be well organized this yeah. time and then it is, it you know, can come from few quarters, not only one place. Yeah. So you need to basically fight it out. I mean, I, you, we in a sovereign nation, we may have done some mistakes. And then they are talking of the last two weeks of the war. Mm. What have been 30 years of the war? Yeah. You know, I mean, then, then, then that itself yeah. doesn't match. Yeah. You know, so I suppose uh, if I was there, I would have been, uh, I would take uh, this case by case. Yeah. And right. perhaps question, yes. how do they answer to this? Yes. You know, hope that they will do. It is a battle. It is a going to be a battle. Unfortunately, I mean, I Just don't know. I mean, it's very unfortunate. But um, motives of the parties during 2015 to their yeah. own were not genuine. They yeah. were trying to take vengeance from the previous government. Yes, yes. In the in between that, they are not taking the vengeance from the government on the previous government. They are taking it from the country. They should deal that in a different forum, right? Uh, so, I, I don't know how they look at it. Anyway, you'll have a fight in hand. You'll have a challenge in hand. And, uh, uh, yeah, one thing is that they cannot, uh, because this is not binding, uh, uh, the UN uh, Human Rights Resolution is not binding. Uh, it has to be referred to the Security Council, the internal affairs. Yeah. Uh, but uh, having said that, again, they have the, they will get the right to individually 
uh, bring in their embargoes if they want, mm. like the British. Because these are all based on different political compulsions. Mm -hmm. no? You see, if you look at uh, if you look at London, mm -hmm. London Mayor is one of the most powerful positions in the political arena. Mm -hmm. You can never be never ha have a London Mayor without the support of the LTT. Mm -hmm. There, right? That's for rice. If you look at uh, Canada, so obviously you see those political compulsions as far as they are concerned pushes them uh, to put country against the wall. You know? Uh, you need to accept the challenge and then meet the challenge and then uh, talk to them and uh, you know mm, yeah it's all a dialogue at the end it's how you engage and uh, you see your approach matters you um, you can't be arrogant uh, you cannot be very mild either you know you know, uh, your balance has to uh, play a vital role in the entire you know system so hopefully our people will do that you know yeah Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.